In this video, I will discuss the weapons and battle tactics commonly used by soldiers in the Revolutionary War. The most common weapon used during the Revolutionary period was the muzzle-loading flintlock musket. This was a smoothbore weapon, meaning that it had no rifling or spiral grooves cut down the barrel to improve accuracy. Therefore, the musket was accurate only to a distance of around 75 yards or less. The British musket was typically a 75 caliber gun firing 69 caliber balls, while the American musket was typically smaller, usually a 69 caliber gun firing 65 caliber balls. In both cases, the shot fired was smaller than the barrel because of the sooty residue that black powder would leave inside the gun. Both American and British soldiers also attached bayonets to the ends of their muskets for close combat and defense against cavalry. The other weapon commonly used during the war was the cannon. Usually, the cannons used in the field were three, four, or six pound guns, although sometimes field soldiers would use up to 12 pound cannons. On ships, however, much larger cannons were used, such as 18, 24, 32, 36, or even 50 pound guns. The shot fired from these guns was either hollow shells, solid balls, or grape shot, a container filled with small balls that would fly over a large range. Solid balls had a range of around 800 yards, and grape shot a range of around 200 yards. The weight of the solid ball that went into each cannon, not the weight of the cannon itself, determined its pound rating. Cannons were an immense advantage to whoever had them, and often a company with no cannon would avoid skirmish or battle with a company that had cannon reinforcement as the cannon was typically the deciding factor in such battles. Pistols and swords were also used, but rarely. Pistols were used only for very close range combat, or duels, as they were extremely inaccurate. Swords were usually carried only by officers, and were rarely used in actual combat. The battle tactics of both British and American armies were very similar. Both sides used what is known as linear tactics, in which the soldiers on each side of the field would line up across the field and exchange volleys of gunfire, each side hoping to disrupt the line of the enemy. Once a line had been disrupted, soldiers began to charge with their bayonets. Contrary to popular belief, the Continental Army did not engage in much guerrilla warfare, although they did use their advanced knowledge of the landscape to aid in the effort at the battles of Lexington and Concord. And that's about it for the common weapons and battle tactics of the revolution. Thanks for watching.